Hello everyone, welcome to this channel that is Brilliant Online Academy. Today I'm going to take you through the chemistry form one, the first topic introduction to chemistry under the subtopic known as the Bunsen burner. So work with me and ensure that you you subscribe through this one you can check on how you can subscribe you subscribe you click the like you subscribe then you hit the notification bell subscribe hit the notification bell and also you can now like uh, the video you like then you do what you subscribe then hit the notification bell. I thank you very much for uh, doing that. So today I've said we are going to talk about the Bunsen banner. At the, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to achieve the following uh, observ uh, objectives, I mean. One, you should be able to draw the Bunsen banner. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to draw and label a Bunsen banner. You should also be able to, to name the parts of the Bunsen banner. You should also be able to give the functions of the parts of a Bunsen banner. You should be able to explain the parts of a Bunsen banner and you state how they are adapted to their functions. Very good. So let us begin the Bunsen banner. So Bunsen banner is just a metallic uh, component or a metallic uh, apparatus, which is used in the laboratory to produce some flames. There are flames that we will be able to talk about them in our next video or uh, as we move on. So I've said the Bunsen burner is just a, a metallic uh, apparatus which is used in the laboratory to produce some some uh, heat, um, some flames. I mean, it produces two flames. So the Bunsen banner cam uh, just uh, originated from the person who invented it. So the person who invented it was called a Bunsen. It was called Bunsen. It was a scientist who came up with uh, this um, apparatus, which is used as a source of uh, um, flames. Uh, so he named it after his name, that is uh, the Bunsen. So the banner, the banner um, is just a wood produce flame. It burns from the word burn. It burns to produce flame or heat or light. So we have this Bunsen banner is made up of three main uh, parts. The first part which we are going to check on is a chimney. The chimney is just a, a hollow metallic pipe that now allows even the something to pass through. I want you to just before we uh, we just I want you to understand uh, the part uh, the, the chimney before getting into its detail according to the Bunsen burner. The chimney just any metallic hole uh, which is in a cylindrical shape. Then we have the collar. The collar is just a ring. For example, maybe uh, the, the wedding ring, we, that one also we can call it a collar because it has that, it is a secular ring. Uh, that is that we will be able to 
or states its function, then we have also now the the base. The base, I know the base is just um what helps something or an object to uh, to be in its stationary position, make it to be stable. That is that. Very good. Then uh, now, this is now the person panel that we are now talking about. So we have talked about, this is what we call them. Uh, we have talked about the chimney. This is the chimney. So we, here we have two diagrams. One, this one shows when it is fixed. All the parts are fixed. Then this one, when the parts are separated so that at least you can know all the parts that makes the bar, the Bansen banner. Very good. So we have talked about this chimney and chimney you have said it is a hollow metallic cylinder with an air hole near its lower end. So it's just a, a hollow metallic cylinder, which means there is a hole inside it. So that hole is what makes the flame to penetrate. That is that. Again, we have said that it has a hole, this hole here. It has a hole at lower part, at its lower part. Then would the Bunsen burner also have got what we call the collar. Now this is the collar, it is one. This is the collar. And that in the collar we have an air hole that also will be able to, to talk about. So the collar looks like this, it's just a ring. So the, like that. So that is the collar. And in, in the collar we have a certain hole. We have an air hole, a hole called an air hole. Very magnetic. So I've said it is a metallic ring, which may have an air hole whose diameter is slightly bigger than that of size of that of chimney. So at least the, the diameter of the collar, it is uh, bigger than that of chimney because it will be fixed. It will be fixed in the, the chimney. So it was to connect the chimney and uh, the, the base. So you should be able to know that. So, it has a size that uh, so that the chimney can just fit into it. Oh, very good. Then we have uh, the base. Now the base is made up of a, a thick. The reason why it is thick is to make it stable. We'll be able to discuss the functions. First of all, the first objective we should be able to you should be able to draw this fancy banner of which I've showed you how it looks like. When you are drawing, what should come to your mind is the main parts that I'm now talking about, the three main parts. When you are drawing, make sure that you cover you cover the chimney. And we have said a chimney is just a cylindrical metallic uh, metallic um, that has got an uh, uh, hole near its base and it is a hollow metallic means uh, there is a hole that passes from the bottom to the top you should be able to know that then you should also talk about the collar so it is divided into three parts we have the chimney which is this one and we have talked about that then we have the collar and also we are having the bear the base and the base is a thick metallic material into which a small hollow metallic uh, metal with a jet is fitted. So we have the jet is this one, we'll be able to know that. So when you are drawing, ensure you cover that. When you are told to draw, um, you draw the Bunsen banner, you can draw even this one here. You draw this, this is the chimney. Then this is the collar. That is the collar. Then we have the air hole, which is the collar there. Then we have the base. And we have the rubber tubing. 
which brings so this rubber tubing is what connect the 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 gas the laboratory gas with the bus and banner should be able to to know that very good and also we have the base so when you are drawing and sure you draw this one you draw you show you label chimney this is a chimney label it color we have the air hole we have the base and we have the rubber tubing very good let's see the next which is now the functions of the parts of the Bunsen banner so let's now know the functions the functions of the different parts of a Bunsen banner so the first one we have the base and uh, at least we have uh, showed the base you know the base so the base it is a wide so this is how it is even adapted to this function it is wide and weighty helps to provide helps to provide support to the banner it also helps to provide direct contact of the banner with the workplace so the main important or the main function of the the base just to provide support to the to the banner again uh, you can be asked on how the Bansen banner is adapted to its function so you can say it is wide and weighty so the the when um, uh, the reason why it is wide the wide if for example if we check for this this one that shape and this shape here if you place these ones on a top of a, a bench or a table you realize this that this one will might fall down because it is not stable if you check the base here the base is is not wide then if you compare this one this one will uh, be stable it will stand still it will not fall down because of the base area so the base is wider and provide support therefore it will not fall down so that is why the function of the, the base so the base is wider or wide to provide the support to the banner it uh, another function you know i've said again it also provide direct contact of the banner with the workplace so direct contact to mean that this base will be in contact with the working place or uh, the bench that you will be because in the laboratory you will be able to do experiment using that the Bunsen banner as a source of heat when heating. So that base will provide direct contact with the bench that you're using in the laboratory. Another one is the chimney. So the chimney it is approximately five inches tall, metallic long. So the reason why it is long is just to raise the flame to a suitable height for the heating. So that chimney is long and it is a metallic one. To mean it cannot be burned with the flame which is being pro produced. So when you ask to to uh, to um, I mean at least uh, uh, state or explain how the chimney is adapted to its function, you will say that it is um, approximately it is a metallic with approximate height of five inches. That therefore it raises. Um, the the flame to a suitable height for heating, or you can also say it is made up of metal, metal, therefore cannot be burnt or cannot be consumed with the flame which is produced. Another function that I want you to take note of the the chimney in the chimney is where 
the flame is being produced. So the gas from the, uh, the jet mixes with the air from the air hole at the chimney to produce the, the flame. So there is where the combustion takes place. I want you to get that point clear. We have the gas, uh, the, the gas inlet. So the gas inlet uh, drives the gas from the cylinder to the chimney via what we call the gas jet or the jet. So this gas will also mix with the air from the air hole. So that air mix with the gas and therefore the combustion now takes place at the what? At the chimney. Very good. We have the collar. The collar is it. The collar is just a ring, just the way we said it is a ring. And this ring, it just, uh, because we said, sorry, we said at the chimney, we have an air hole. I want you to get that. So this, it, this is our chimney. There is an air hole there. So this air hole is what allows the air from the, air, the word air hole. It allows the air to enter into the chimney. So this one, we can now re regulate the amount of air entering into the chimney by using what we call the collar. So to mean when we close the, when we adjust the collar upward, it will close that that hole. Therefore, there will be no air enter entering. Or if we adjust it halfway to me now will uh, will limit the air which enters the what the air also it regulates the amount or controls if the word regulates is not handsome for you or beautiful for you you can use um, controls it controls the amount of air entering into the chimney because the air hole is on the chimney, the lower base of the chimney. Very good. Then we have now the jet. Let me take you back here. We have the, the jet. The jet now allows the laboratory gas to enter into the chimney where that gas will now mix with the air from the surrounding that and that air gets in through what we call the air the air hole so when the the gas from the the, uh, the jet enters into the chimney it uh it um it mixes with the air from the air hole therefore the for the combustion to take place sorry for the combustion to take place at the chimney when the combustion takes place now there is a production of what we call the the flame and I've said that we have two types of flames. We have an luminous flame and luminous flame, of which we'll discuss them later. So that is what I want you to understand. So the function of this jet allows the gas into the chimney from the tubing connected to the gas source and mixes with air from the air hole before the combustion. So in short, if you ask to state the function, you state the function of the, of the, of, of the, I mean of the jet, you just say it allows the air or the laboratory gas, I mean, it allows the laboratory gas into the chimney to mix 
with the the air from the air hole before the combustion. So the combustion only occurs when you maybe introduce you light you light it you light the gas of which uh, in the laboratory you'll be able to do that with uh, your teacher. The air hole. So we have talked about that. The air hole is just to allow the air into the chimney to mix with the laboratory gas from the from the jet. And I think uh, that makes us to come to the end of our presentation for today. So that is the end of our presentation. I want you to be able to know the three parts of the Bansen banner. We have talked about the chimney, the, the main one, the main one when you are drawing it, the chimney. We have talked about the, the collar and we have talked about the base. Those are the main parts. And you should also be able to draw the Bansen banner, a well level diagram of a Bansen banner. Then you should all know uh, the function of all now the parts. And the all the parts of the Bansen banners, they are they are five. You should be able to know them. The base, the collar, the chimney, the jet, and then the air hole. So we have said the base provides the support. We have said the chimney uh, raises the flame to a suitable height for heating. We have said that the jet allows the laboratory gas into the chimney. Again, we have talked about uh, the air hole. The air hole allows the uh, allows the air into the chimney. Then we have also talked about the collar. The collar is just to regulate the amount of air entering into the chimney or controls the amount of air entering into the chimney. Just simple as that. So the assignment that I'm going to leave you with um, uh, describe how the following parts of the Bansen banner are adapted to their functions. One, the chimney. The second one is the collar. The third one is the, the air hole. The fourth one is the base. And the fifth one is the air hole. I want you to do that and comment, like the video, share with your friends so that we learn together. We'll be able to uh, post video every day, ensure that you visit our site. Uh, instead of visiting it frequently, what you can do, subscribe by hitting the subscription button. Uh, click the notification bell. The reason, the, the main important of clicking that, it will be, you will be notified once we upload a new video. Otherwise, thank you and be blessed. Have a nice time. Comment. Tell me what you want me to discuss with you. Tell me what, ask me any question. I'll be able to answer you accordingly and ensure that you enjoy this simple subject called chemistry. Chemistry is the easiest science that you should be able to understand best. Thank you. I'm Justin Mondi. Catch. Okay.